y hoy compareció por segunda vez ante una corte estatal un pastor de origen salvadoreño que está acusado de haber defraudado a más de un millar de inmigrantes prometiéndole documentos que al final resultó ser todo un fraude según la policía. El juez a cargo del caso decidió que podía concederle una fianza de 100 mil dólares al sospechoso para que pueda salir en libertad mientras se llega el momento de su juicio. Mr. González is a native of El Salvador. He came to the United States in February of 1983 at the age of 17. Um, he fled his home country as a result of the, um, the, the horrible and destructive civil war that was going on in that, in that country uh, between the government and, um, <clears throat> and the communist insurgents. Um, a, a very tragic story. My client had to drop out of school in the third grade. Um, As a result, uh, he has, um, he has uh, nine siblings. He's one of nine siblings. Um, as a result of the war, they were, it's very difficult to make ends meet. So he dropped out of the third grade in order to, in order to basically help feed his family. Um, he moved to the United States in 1983, uh, initially settling in Texas. Uh, he later attained legal status, uh, status and became a U.S. citizen in, uh, in the year 2000. Um, he has lived in Gwinnett County since 1984. Um, after coming to the United States, he worked at a lighting company. He worked as a plumber, um, doing other work. Um, but since 1991, he has worked at, um, the company name has changed names several times, but it's currently known as Ryerson Metals Incorporated, which is located at 4400 Peachtree Industrial Boulevard in Norcross, Georgia. They are a manufacturer of metal tubes um, and sheet metal. It's like a specialty metal shop. He's a machinist there. Um, he's been there for 27 years, Judge. Um, he started out at the very bottom. He's received a number of promotions over the years um, as a, essentially as a machinist. Um, and he works with the metal and the machines, Judge. Um, he, as soon as he came to the United States, he never had the opportunity to get any sort of formal education other than um, to try and learn English to the best of his ability. Um, he does speak some English, but it's not particularly good. He's never even graduated from grade school, doesn't have a GED. Um, he owned a home in Gwinnett County for more than 20 years, but lost it in 2007 due to a foreclosure. Um, and just as I stated before, he has um, no GED, he doesn't know how to use a computer, he doesn't know how to type, um, he can barely read or write in English or Spanish, um, he doesn't know how to use a smartphone, the only phone that he has is an old school flip phone that just has the numbers on it and, and send. Um, he has multiple, a, a lot of relatives that live in the United States. Uh, Um, three, uh, three brothers live in Georgia, one in Virginia, one in Texas. Several of his family members are here in court today. If you all raise your hands. Um, all these, we've got four members of his family that are here present today. Uh, Miss Norma Escobar, Chris, uh, who's his um, niece. Uh, her father, Crescencio Gonzalez, who is um, Mr. Gonzalez's brother and a, a local pastor. Um, Geraldine Gonzalez, uh, his niece who lives in Lawrenceville, she's a stay-at-home mom with two kids, and Santos Gonzalez, um, who's his nephew, um, who works in construction and has lived in Gwinnett County for the past five years. He has several other relatives that live in Gwinnett County, including his brother Antonio and his brother Armando, um, who live, one, uh, one lives in Sugarloaf Boulevard, one lives in uh, Satellite Boulevard. Um, his brother who's present here today lives in Lawrenceville. Um, He is married. Um, his wife lives in El Salvador, however, um, and he has an 11-year-old daughter there, so he does frequently travel outside the country to go and visit them, uh, but only because they, they reside in El Salvador. Um, he also has several, a lot of nieces and nephews that live in Gwinnett County. Um, his one arrest was at age 19 in Roswell for armed robbery. That case was dismissed. Further investigation revealed that he simply did not commit that crime. Um, and it was dismissed by the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. Um, 
I would point out to the court that my client has cooperated with police when they came to execute the search warrant. The, uh, the detective testified that he was incredibly polite and cooperative. He allowed them to come in and look around. Um, when Ms. Washington's daughter um, contacted him to try and influence him to give false testimony to the police or in court, um, his response was not to be quiet, but it was to reach out and report that. Um, I think that's highly relevant on the IALA factors, you know, as your honor is well aware. Um, he's a, the court is required to determine whether he's a risk of flight, whether he's a risk or threat of danger to the community, whether he's a risk of committing crimes, or risk of intimidating witnesses, or otherwise obstructing justice. Um, Judge, I don't think he's a risk of flight. He is a United States citizen. He's had the same job for 27 years, as I stated. Deep ties to Gwinnett County since he moved, moved to the United States. Um, if the court has any concerns with regard to risk of flight, we would absolutely have no problem whatsoever with my client surrendering his passport um, or ordering any sort of pretrial supervision or ankle monitoring if that would address any concerns that the court has. Um, it, other than the armed robbery case that I talked about before, he's never been convicted of he got out of arrest, which was dismissed, never been convicted of anything, no, he was a threat of danger to the community, or committing any crimes, or intimidating witnesses, or obstructing justice, as evidenced by the fact that he is the named victim in a case related to this case, in which they tried to intimidate him, and he reported it. He came forward and reported it to the police. And, and it was investigated, and the detective stated that they found that information to be credible, and they got a warrant, and they arrested that woman who was released on a $7,900 bond. So she gets out on bond for attempting to influence him, and he's being held as a no bond. So, uh, Judge, I believe that that is just grossly unfair. It's wrong. Um, I believe that he's an excellent candidate for bond, and we would ask the court to set a reasonable bond with whatever restrictions, including uh, uh, curfew, um, can't change his address without permission, um, ankle monitoring, uh, you can't, any sort of travel restrictions, the court feels are appropriate in order to address the concerns that I'm confident that the state will bring up. Um, I just don't believe that he presents a risk of any of the IL factors. I think he will show up for trial. Got it. So. Thank you.